Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be taking apart a DVD player. Uh, one of the common things you find when you're scrapping electrical items is DVD players. So are they worth scrapping? Is there much in them? Uh, we are about to find out. So this particular brand is a Matsui. Uh, and what I've actually done is I've taken apart, you know, a couple of these today already so I'll give you a brief idea before I actually start dissecting this one and what's actually uh, inside one of these DVD players so as you can see this is one that I've already taken apart uh, let's have a quick look at which one this is so this is a, a Pacific and uh, not a brand I'm very familiar with so that's the front panel and commonly in these what you get is you get one board uh, that sits in terms of the main power board you get a disk drive itself and you'll get a display board as well so this is a display board so not too much involved in a display board as you can see there's a few tactile switches there and not a much else apart from some wiring Obviously, it contains copper as well, so we'll stick it in your copper wire, wire pile. Uh, on the back, nothing much at all, so nothing really worth scavenging there. In terms of the main board, main board's not too bad. A few IC chips on there, uh, a little transformer, and a kind of copper wire item there as well and these little blue capacitors some of these are actually tantalum and tantalum is quite a rare metal so definitely worth keeping them uh, what else is there these little ones you can see are marked with a C they are monolithic capacitors and they contain both silver and platinum uh, so definitely worth keeping them uh, and taking them from each of your boards but you do need an awful lot of them uh, obviously to get that, uh, that, that amount of uh, precious metal back from them I think it's something like around about 2% uh, platinum some of them and 10% silver so you know if you get a lot of weight then it is worth actually keeping them and processing them if you're able to do so or sell them online. A uh, couple of other items on there, but not a lot high grade stuff. Uh, but definitely worth taking off those IC chips. Uh, the big one in there, uh, especially. On the other side of the board, pretty much blank. Nothing really there of value. On a disk drive, as you can see on a disk drive. There is a couple of uh, little electric motors, so one here and one here. Uh, I actually keep all these in a big bucket in the shed uh, and uh, you know, you get enough of them, they'll be worth trading into the scrapyard. Uh, but apart from that, there's not a lot more here. Uh, as I've said before, I do kind of keep all the little small, small metal items, I stick them in a tin. Uh, and when that tin's full, I seal it up and add it to all my other scrap mail that goes out to the scrapyard. So not a lot there, a couple of bits of wire. Uh, again, put most of the wire like this in a bag and just sell it all to the scrapyard as number two wire. If it's nice thick wire, then obviously I would strip that out and uh, retain the copper because uh, you do get a lot more money for the copper than obviously the insulated wire itself good thing about DVDs is they are metal usually uh, so no plastic waste obviously all this can go to the scrapyard these two items here are steel uh, so not a lot of value in steel obviously you need quite a bit of weight to get any value out of it but uh, it's you know if you collect enough of anything it can be worth some money and one of the other items obviously is the bit that fell off earlier on which is your power source for so your plug and your your wire so obviously copper wire contained in here and 
I also do take the brass off the plugs and keep all that together as well. You know, you get lots of plugs and all these things, you keep all the brass from the plugs, it soon mounts up. Uh, and, you know, if you get something like three, four pound a kilo for your brass, brass is a heavy metal, so it can, uh, it can accumulate quite quickly and as can the weight. So it's all worthwhile doing. So that's the one we've already taken apart. So what we'll do now is we will take apart the Matsui one and see what we get there. So the Matsui Mat DVD 3307 DVD player. Uh, I'm sure you guys will be pleased to know that I've saved you having to watch me actually undo all the screws. So not a lot of screws. Uh, to get it undone uh, and hopefully it should lift off fairly easy unfortunately I am doing this one handed and holding the camera with the other hand so we will have to pry it off there we go, not too bad And as you can see, not a lot different from the previous one, but actually there's a couple of different boards in here. So there is a main power board, which you can see here, with your transformer. And this transformer obviously will contain copper wire. You have your little capacitors. It's quite hard to tell which ones of these are just kind of normal capacitors and which ones are tantalum. Uh, but there's a few capacitors in there. This little item in here as well. It's a little copper copper wire as well contained within that. Not a lot of copper wire, but again, you know, you got loads of them. You save them up and eventually you'll get a nice little bit of copper out of it. So not a lot really there. But a couple of items that can be taken off. Another little copper one there as well. And really the key to a lot of this is you're trying to do this for precious metal recovery and you're looking for things like gold pins and you know silver switches and all this kind of stuff but the real money I've found anyway is in the copper uh, so the more copper you can get out of these systems uh, the better as you can see the main board a few IC chips IC chips really are for your gold recovery Usually there's gold wiring inside these, so again a bit of precious metal recovery there. Uh, a couple of IC chips there. Not a lot of high grade stuff. Uh, you got some resistors there. I actually keep them off as well because actually some of the resistors inside have gold plating. Uh, so they can be worthwhile as well. Your little uh, item in the middle here. The one that's got the 750 on it. Right in the middle there, can can zoom in too much. Those are little resistors as well, and they actually contain quite a bit of silver. So if you've got a lot of them, uh, you can get a bit of silver out of them. But you probably need about a pound worth, uh, weight wise, uh, of those resistors to probably get a couple of gram of silver. These the big silver thing in the middle there. That's called a crystal oscillator. Uh, and there is silver inside them, uh, but obviously when you recover precious metals, a lot of people use acids to dissolve the metal and then precip precipitate the gold. It's probably not worthwhile putting you know all that in there to get a tiny bit of silver out of it. You can actually break them open, which is quite difficult to do actually, and then try and get the silver out of it that way. Uh, it does contain silver inside of it. So uh, I will probably do a video at some point showing you how to extract that silver. Uh, but yeah, it's quite difficult to do. You need a lot of these crystal oscillators and there's not a lot of uh, silver recovery inside them. You can see again uh, the little items with the C markings. So C16, C18, whatever that may be. Can't actually see that well. Uh, that again is a monolithic capacitor. Again containing platinum and silver. So again, not a lot of value here, not too much on the board. Uh, but again, you know, there's, there's, it's better than nothing. 
uh, there is some uh, stuff to be had you see if you take these uh, these copper items and save them all up and you know I try and break them open and take the copper out of it as I go along uh, or you end up with absolutely loads of them and it just takes a lot of time to, to break through them and get the, the copper out of them the copper wire so I'll try and do it as I go along save up that copper and then uh, hopefully you know you have a nice yield of copper at the end of it all again here uh, all you're really going to get out of this is some copper motors there is copper inside these motors a little electrical motors but I don't take the copper out of them I just leave them as is and I sell them to the scrapyard as copper motors uh, you don't get a great a deal of money pa back for them probably about 14 pence a kilo or something like that but again with everything if you have a lot of them uh, and obviously you know be it small motors or large motors that come out of things like hoovers or uh, other larger appliances um, you know you can save them all up and you can uh, eventually have quite a bit of weight there take them as crappies and get a bit of uh, a yield back and a bit of uh, recompense so all these things are worth saving so what we'll do we'll take these off the board now uh, I'll take them off one by one again I'll not make you watch me take the screws out but I'll show you in a little bit more detail once we get them out so the first thing out is the power board so we'll run over that in quite a bit of detail uh, usually the little things here uh, if they're yellow uh, or some of them have got kind of numbers across them as well they can be little tantalum capacitors as well uh, not normally on power boards but on other boards so it's something to watch out from with like a kind of beige yellowish uh, I'm sure I'll find some on other boards that I can show you at another time but uh, as I say tantalum is quite a precious metal a uh, little fuse probably some silver wire in there as well with the fuse and I actually keep all fuses even from plugs so obviously the plugs here inside here you'll have a fuse and normally the ends of these fuses are silver uh, they're certainly uh, they're certainly silver coated uh, so again you know worth saving keeping them unfortunately this plug isn't brass uh, these little pieces here Look like it could be brass, uh, but until I actually pull them off, I won't know. They can actually be aluminium as well, so obviously aluminium's not worth, or aluminium for any Americans watching. Uh, but for the UK, aluminium, uh, and yeah, there's not a lot of money in aluminium unless you have a lot of it as well. Uh, but aluminium certainly worth saving because it's uh, you know a lot more money than you get for steel. Uh, aluminium something like one pound twenty, I think a kilo or something like that. So. Uh, worth saving uh, if you've got a lot of it but obviously a very light metal so you do need a lot of it to make any money from it uh, so hopefully they're brass I can take the little bits off there's a, a very thin stem of, of brass if they are behind the little plastic coating uh, and inside obviously there will be some uh, some brass as well but these plugs are quite difficult to take apart uh, you do need kind of these uh, snips and stuff to break off the outer casing and get to them uh, again i'll do a video about that and kind of best ways to do that for these uh, encased uh, plugs the ones that don't have the screws in the front because obviously the ones in the screws in the front nice and easy just lift them off but these ones are a little bit more of a pain to get apart and get the brass out from inside but as you can see nice long wire on it as well attached to the power board but we will break that off and we will take the copper out of the wire. And for the main board, so we went over the main board in a bit of uh, detail already. Some resistors, some capacitors, some IC chips. Uh, no real silver or gold uh, to be taken out of this one other than within the chips and within the, obviously the small capacitors. Uh, but nothing major on this board. Well, our first chance to have a look at the underside and as you can see there's a lot of uh, monolithic capacitors uh, some really small ones in there and actually it can be quite difficult to get off uh, different ways of doing it getting them off like using heat guns and things like that I actually just use a small uh, flathead screwdriver uh, and just uh, push them off but uh, 
you know it can be time consuming and you need to watch wash your hands with these things because you know there are sharp pieces on this as you can see here and uh, if you slip when you're pushing it off with a screwdriver then you can find yourself cutting your fingers fairly easy uh, a couple of little small IC chips no real value there uh, but again I do save the small IC chips along with the rest of them I'm sure they'll uh, all mount up and worth doing uh, pin wise no gold pins as you can see so not a lot of value they just be aluminium uh, it may actually just be steel ch uh, pins as well so I'm not too sure but they're certainly not gold so uh, not of interest to me I'm afraid and that's the main board so remove the drive as you can see uh, not too much value in the drive but there's certainly a couple of motors in this one as well and again worth saving those motors no value there Got a little bit of metal on top and looking at the detail on the board sometimes you get a little bit of gold flashing on this but uh, not a lot uh, you will see things like the connectors as well so if I pull this up for you little connectors that actually connect to the main board you see the flashing on this one is silver uh, and actually the flashing on some of these are gold uh, not coming in DVD players but in other electrical devices you do get gold flashing and it is actually gold plate you would think that uh, being silver uh, if the gold was a gold that silver plate would be on this and that would be silver but unfortunately it isn't it's not silver at all i think it's actually tin uh, so again no value in that no worth keeping that uh, but again that is copper wire inside that as well so i would stick that again within your uh, copper wire recovery if you are uh, not uh, stripping the wire out and you are selling it as insulated wire so that's about it on this board uh, we can take these things apart uh, what i'll do is actually i'll take one of these motors out and give you a bit of a closer look at that so extracted one of these mores just to show you a little bit more detail uh, you know what it, what it looks like and give you a little bit more detail now as you can see there's a kind of cap on the top here if you take that cap off you can get to the copper inside of it and um, the copper is coiled uh, around the fitting uh, and it can take you know quite a bit of time to get that off uh, for me it's not really worth my while to get into that and spend all that time uh, it's a steel outer casing uh, does give it a little bit more weight uh, so yeah I wouldn't recommend you know try to take all the copper out of that but you know what if you've got time on your hands you want to get actually the pure copper out of there you're not too much interested in you know just uh, the steel casing uh, and selling it as just this one unit uh, then yeah you know crack off that top layer a little pair of snips pliers whatever it is you need to to use there to get that off and you can get to the copper inside uh, i'll actually show you uh, the weight of this as well just to, so you can see kind of how heavy something like this is so my uh, trusty little Wotec scale uh, in grams and I'll put that on so it's 21.3 grams so again not the heaviest item but as I say you know I've got a bucket full of hundreds of these uh, so they all add up uh, and you know eventually they'll be they'll be worth taking to the scrapyard and trading them in Finally, going back to the DVD player itself, there's one last thing to extract, uh, and as you can see, it's the the board on the underside. Again, I showed you, you know, the board on the underside on the previous DVD player. So I'll get the screwdriver out and I will take this off for you and give you a closer look. Okay, so we've now got the screws out, and we can take these boards out now. That one out, so it's actually connected to one on the other side as well. And take that one out as well. So 
so I'm back over here with the others and let's see what's on this board so again much like the other one and much like all the DVDs you'll find you get a few tactile switches uh, I will do a video on these uh, the tactile switches and why we keep these uh, and it's normally because there's a little button of gold uh, silver sorry not gold a little button of silver uh, below this uh, you, when you take this top bit off there's actually a little brass plate uh, people think that's gold but it's not it's, it's brass uh, and uh, we just uh, extract the silver from the little button that's underneath it uh, again you need lots and lots of these to extract any decent amount of silver but you know they're on everything uh, they're on DVD players, you get lots of them on printers and things like that, so there's lots of them to be found uh, and so there's a chance to get quite a lot of them built up uh, and then you have your copper wire a little tactile switch on the end of that one as well that's really about it from that one on the other side is an IC chip uh, not much else really So guys, that's really about it for the teardown of the DVD players. Uh, one last tip I would say is if you are scrapping stuff, just make sure you've got the right tools. Uh, wear protective gear if necessary. Uh, because you do find yourself getting lots of little cuts and grazes uh, if you've not got gloves on. Uh, obviously today, not wearing gloves. Uh, just to give you this demo and to be able to actually record on my phone as well. Uh, but lots of little screws, especially when you're dealing with, you know, things like this. As you can see, there's lots of little screw heads on there. Uh, and you really need small screwdrivers to, to actually to get those screws out. Uh, there's a lot of ones I use, so, you know, they're not big at all. Uh, you know, if I stick one of them next to my hand, for instance, as you can see cut myself so another good uh, reason to wear gloves and there's the cut and that was just obviously taking something out there uh, which I've caught it so and again another advocate for wearing protective gloves but yeah as you can see small screwdrivers uh, this is a Magnuson one and these are the Magnuson bits as well and actually you know there's a lot of different variations in the actual screw bits as well and sh believe me you will use them all because uh, lots of different things especially the things like uh, hard drives and things like that if you're taking them apart they do need these little hexen hexagon ones uh, so they do come in really handy and obviously all the different sizes of your Phillips screwdriver as well so yeah make sure you've got all the right tools uh, and that will make it much easier and less frustrating uh, when you're trying to take these things apart. Alright, thanks for watching guys and see you on the next teardown.